I'm dreaming of a green Christmas. Hi, it is 57 degrees in Ashland, Ohio. Take that, snow lovers. This is the Pixel Pushing Maniac. Today I'm going to show you how to make some good looking oceans in Blender 2.61 with the Cycles Render Engine. Now the first thing to consider when you're creating an ocean in Blender is your shark to surfer ratio. That is, uh, if you have close to the same number of sharks as you do surfers in your ocean, uh, you can have some disastrous results. It's kind of a PR nightmare. So I'm going to go for a surfer heavy ocean, which means uh, big waves. So let's create a plane and then in the modifiers give it an ocean modifier which automatically generates all of this uh, mesh data which we can see if we press uh, Z to go into wireframe mode you can see it generates a pretty dense mesh I'm actually going to increase the resolution just a little bit and that'll look better I'm going to press Z but we see if we press Alt A to watch an animation of our ocean nothing happens well that's because we have to set keyframes for it and the key to that is the time variable here in the ocean modifier. So hover, hover your cursor over the time variable and press I. That will add a keyframe. And then the default frame rate in a Blender scene in 2.61 is 24 frames per second, which is the default frame rate for, well, for Hollywood movies. So set uh, your timeline to frame 24. And then change the time variable in the modifier to 2 and press I again. Now we have a keyframe going from 1 to 2. And it causes one second of animation. It goes from second number 1 to second number 2. And it takes one second to do that. So we've got our ocean animating in real time. But then it just stops. And that's a problem. So go to and change your, your window type to a graph editor. We have our curve here. Press T and change the interpolation type to linear and then press shift E and change the extrapolation type also to linear and now it will extrapolate that animation over time and it will continue at the same pace so now we have our ocean animating I'm gonna position the camera to be lower so I'm just gonna grab it pull it down and then I'm gonna rotate it to be looking across the ocean by pressing R for rotate and then X twice to rotate on the camera's local X axis. I'm going to rotate it up like this, move it down a little more, and I'm going to press G and click on the middle mouse button and that will pull the camera back. I'm going to pull it back until just barely keeping the ocean in the camera view here. Alright, and I'm going to go back to the ocean modifier and increase the scale a little bit which will increase the scale of our waves. I'm going to adjust the camera movement accordingly. We'll see, we've got a pretty nice wavy ocean here. <clears throat> All right, well, that should be it for the modifier and the animation. So now go up here and change your render engine to Cycles Render and select your ocean mesh <clears throat> and create a new material. Call it Ocean. And we want to use a glass shader. Now we can render right now by pressing F12. And you'll see that's pretty boring. That, that looks like Ohio weather generally is, like just a gray sky. So you need to give it first a nice sky. So go to our world settings and choose use nodes. And under color, give it a sky texture. Now that will give us this nice bright blue sky. But we've got a major problem here. Our ocean is way too bright. Because see, if we look at it in our 3D view here, of course, we just have this flat uh, plane. I mean, it's not perfectly flat. It's got the waves, which is the whole point of the ocean modifier. But it's pretty much still a flat object. And our sky is 360 degrees all around. So it's lighting it from every side, including from underneath, which makes it so bright. So we need to get a nice deep look to our ocean. So let's uh, press Shift A again to add and add a cube. I'm going to look at that cube from orthographic front view. 
tab into edit mode and move it down on the Z axis by one. And now <clears throat> that places the cube's object center at the top of the cube. So now if I scale it, it stays, uh, it remains level with our ocean. So I'm going to scale it up until it's the same size as the ocean and I'm going to move it down on the z-axis just a little bit. I'm going to go back into edit mode <clears throat> excuse me, and delete this top face. And now if we render it we see we have a nice deep look to our ocean already or at least it's a lot darker. And this is an accurate simulation of how the real ocean works. The real ocean is blue only because it reflects our blue sky. And then it has massive depth of water underneath it. And as light penetrates from the surface down to the bottom, eventually all the light disperses. And at the very deepest parts of the ocean, there's no light makes it down there, which is what gives it that dark color. But we're not quite done yet. First of all, I'm going to go into the integrator settings and turn my samples down on both render and preview to zero. I guess render doesn't allow you to turn it down to zero. So I'm going to turn it up to something really high like 1024. Uh, if we set the preview to zero and then we change our scene view to rendered, it will just keep rendering more and more samples and it will never stop. Um, which is ideal in my case because uh, I just want to look at it and see it get better and better and better and I, I don't ha I'm not under any kind of time limitation here it's just it's gonna take as long as it's gonna take alright so we're almost done with our ocean here but uh, the real ocean seems in the photographs I've looked at it seems to have a bit more of a reflective quality reflecting the sky than this glass material does. So we're going to get into some of the fanciness of the node system for the materials and cycles. I'm going to change this out of uh, preview mode just because it's always updating during this process. I'm going to divide my window and bring up the node editor and select the ocean. And here we have our nodes. We have a glass shader and then our material output. Well, I'm going to add another shader of the type Mix. And I'm going to add another shader of the type Glossy. But uh, the Glossy um, shader type works pretty much like a mirror. Except we have this roughness value, which kind of diffuses it and makes the reflections not be perfectly smooth. Um, which is good. I found in tests that that works the best for this. And finally, uh, this mix shader right now is just going to mix them 50-50. It's going to give 0.5 of the material to each one of them. Well, that's not what we want. We want uh, the parts of the ocean that are flatter, facing more towards the sky, to be reflective. And those that are facing more towards the camera to have the deep glass uh, look. So we're going to add a final node from the input menu we're going to add a Fresnel node and we're going to add that factor to the mix shader and I believe real water's instance of refraction is 1.3 so we'll add that just to uh, make it make it more accurate and then I'm going to go back into preview mode here and see how that looks so we already begin to see some some more reflections here on the little bit to the right all right, so you can see this material works fairly well. I'm going to show you one more tip today in this tutorial, and that is uh, we. it is possible that we might see at some point this box underneath, which is just in charge of blocking out all the light. Oh, another thing to do is give that box a material and set that material to be very dark and if you do that that will increase the darkness and the depth and the the contrast in the color of your ocean so that's good but another thing to do with that box is go to the object settings down here in ray visibility and uncheck camera and now that box will never render to the camera it will only uh, it will affect the ocean but it will not be visible itself 
So that's just a good safeguard in case something happens where it might become visible otherwise. That's all for today. See you next week when I bring you more tips for free software on the Pixel Pushing Maniac.